Today's episode is with thanks to Squarespace.com. Lemmings, would you believe it? It's over 30 years old now. Hello, cave dwellers. Yes, it seems like only yesterday we were helping these green-haired morons try to get from the trapdoor at the start of every level through the fiendish and devilish puzzles on each level all the way through to the exit. Or if we couldn't, hitting that mushroom cloud and watching them all explode in a satisfying pop. A great game, a game changer. It really did change the landscape of puzzle games and it was hugely addictive. A game that was so popular and sold so well, of course, was followed up by add-ons, Oh No More Lemmings, Holiday Lemmings, the Christmas special over here, and then its official sequel, Lemmings 2 Tribes in 1993. You would think a game this old, you would know everything there is to know about it. Well, not so. Something's come to light and we're gonna have fun exploring it in the Tech Nibble episode that I have lined up for you today. What we're going to play with today was born out of two videos on the channel. The first being an interview with Mike Daly, who was the programmer, who came up with the original tech demo that became Lemmings at the Studio DMA Design. And the other, a more recent video about a USB floppy drive that allows you to easily capture Amiga floppy disks using a PC, despite Amiga disks normally being unreadable on the PC. Now, shortly after that video, I saw that Mike had commented about it and the disk drive on Twitter. Yes, I know it blows my mind too that these old game devs that I respect so much might actually watch my videos. But there you are, he did. So I reached out to him and said, if you ever want to borrow the drive, it's all yours, I can loan it to you. Before we knew it, it was in his possession and he dug these out of his collection of floppy disks. What we have here are his original disks from the game studio, DMA, containing the level editors for the game, never released to the public. And I'm pleased to say that he was successful in ripping them using the USB drive and then he posted the floppy disk back to me along with this letter which reads many thanks for the use of your drive it means a lot i've been trying for 20 years to back up my original lemmings disk so finally having a digital backup really does mean a lot and i'll definitely be getting one one of these disk drives when they become available by way of grateful thanks here's a couple of yeah he didn't just send the disk drive back knowing that i'm in a mill and there's a pond outside he sent me these <laughs> two radio controlled boats. I'm gonna have a lot of fun with these. Maybe we can have a bit of fun before the end of the episode. Um, yeah, thanks for that, Mike. I <laughs> really appreciate it. So he sent me those back, but how great is that? We helped him achieve a 20 year old goal of archiving and securing those disc images forever because the discs are just rotting away. So it's great that they're safe now. And I'm pleased to say that Mike has shared the disc images with me and we're gonna take a look at the Lemmings level editor today and see how did they create levels right there in the studio, not some third party level editor that was made after the fact. This is exactly how they did it when they were making the game. So let's take it for a test drive. I've got the discs. I've got a photocopied manual, which was written by Steve Hammond, also of DMA Design. And we'll see if we can figure it out and have some fun. The objective of Lemmings, as I'm sure you all know, is to get the Lemmings from the trapdoor to the exit on each level, with the levels progressing in their difficulty and the actions available, bridge building, digging, blocking, and so on, becoming more finite in their availability, forcing you to become creative in your solutions. The key to its success, clever level design, and that demanded level editing software that would allow the team to be creative and quickly test their designs. Now, funnily enough, I always assumed that game developers have the latest and greatest tools. Mike must have had a big box Amiga 2000 and all of the upgrades available stuffed into it when he made this. Well, no, actually. I asked him and he told me that he owned an Amiga 500 Batman pack, just like many of us. This is the retail version of 1990s Lemmings 1. And if we switch over to the disc that Mike ripped, there are a couple of noticeable differences. It has a title screen, which I've not actually seen before. On the retail version, you get an animated intro instead of that static screen, but I'm informed by Mike that it also appeared on some early demos and that title screen was ripped for a fan-made version of the game for the Thompson T08 computer. Also on the main menu, we're missing the difficulty setting. We've got four menu options instead of five, so it's either not required for the level design element or that just hasn't been implemented yet. And there's no sound in this level editor version. Perhaps it didn't exist yet, or perhaps it's to save memory and disk space. Other than those differences, 
you can start the game and you can play as normal. But the first level on our rip disc does look different to the retail level. So where's the level editor you're probably thinking? Well that's integrated into the game. On the retail version if you press the escape key on the keyboard it would quit the level but in this it takes us straight into the level editor. Pretty cool. And once we're in here we can use the Z and the X keys to cycle through the different tiles that we can use to build a level. And I'm finding all of these commands using this, it's a scanned copy of the user guide which was put together by Steve Hammond at DMA all the way back in 1990. By cycling through the tiles and clicking away with the mouse we can paint our levels. It's really little more than a glorified paint package and that's all it needs to be. You can choose a tile, there's an option to invert the tiles so you can get a bit more variety out of them and you can also set them to be a background layer so that others can be painted over the top of them. As well as tiles you can place objects. Objects being things like the exit door, the starting trap door, any animated scenery, things like that. So it's not too complex, we can throw a level together, we can hit the escape key and immediately you're back in the game and you're playing the level that you're working on. And that's what I really like about this, you're not making a level in another application and then having to load them into the game, the workflow is really quick. That's not to say making levels is easy though, it's one thing to make a level, it's an entirely different discipline to be able to make an interesting challenge and then slowly ramp that difficulty up through creative level design, a skill I'm quickly realising that I don't possess, but at least I'm competent enough to demonstrate the tool here. You can of course also change the number of lemmings you get for the level and the number that need to be saved to complete the level. And you can also do things like set tiles to be indestructible, that's the red bounding boxes that you see around some tiles. So you could prevent a player from bashing through tiles with a metal texture for example. And you're not limited to one tile set of course, the game has more variety than that so the tiles and the palette change to suit by pressing the shift and the G key and that allows you to cycle through to a new tile set which I'm just going to plaster all over the screen here so you can see what some of those tile sets look like. You can't mix and match those tile sets, you have to stick to a single one for your level. It's been a long time since I played Lemmings in Earnest but all of these tiles seem really familiar which just reminded me how many hours I did put into the game back in the day. I played Lemmings 1 through to completion, at the end you get to see a digitised photo of the DMA design team that made it, I got all the way to there, I was quite proud of myself back in the day but also exhausted which is why I didn't really play a lot of Lemmings 2, I'd, I'd got my fill in the first game. But looking at the tile sets, I can't help but think the destructible landscape, the scrolling screen, the size of the sprites and the lemmings, it's not worlds away from Worms really is it? And legend has it that when Andy Davidson created Worms in 1993 he used the lemming sprites for the early versions that he put together and that really doesn't surprise me. So that gives us a feel for the lemmings 1 level editor, let's see how that's changed in the lemmings 2 discs. And before we get to that, if you need a website, then why not try Squarespace? Squarespace make it easy to create an online presence with their library of templates to get you started, all of which can be customised to the extreme to suit the image of you and your business. Or maybe it's for a personal website, sharing your collection of big box games perhaps. You can make a shop, a blog, a gallery of retro machines, whatever you want to create for your audience. You can do it for 14 days free when you visit squarespace.com forward slash rmc. And if you make a purchase you can enjoy 10% off using the code RMC. Thank you Squarespace for supporting the cave. The Lemmings 1 editor was a single disc, Lemmings 2 is two discs and I've been told by Mike that it's a bit sensitive to how it loads. It only detects a single drive so you have to load the first disc which takes you to the main menu here then you don't click on anything, you put the second disc in and then you'll be able to launch the program by pressing play. But before we do that let's just compare this pre-release menu with the retail game. This is the pre-release and here's the retail on which you can see there's an additional practice mode 
and the exit button is crossed out likely because we haven't launched it from within Workbench so there's actually no operating system to exit back out into so it makes sense that that's crossed out. When we start the game there's also a difference on our pre-release disc we see the levels for the world scrolling past although they do seem to be the same level up until the end and then on the retail version we see just the level we're about to play with icons to scroll to the next level if we've unlocked it otherwise you can't go forward and see what the next levels look like minor differences but interesting to see nonetheless to give us some context the level editor discs are dated 21st of december 1992 for the editor and 14th of january 93 for the disc named all levels which would have been a very quick turnaround but i asked mike if this was the case and he said no this was just the date that the levels were written to disc it took a very very long time to make all the levels mike says he remembers making levels for months and months at a time so a lot of thought went into those final levels level one is the circus tribe by default in the retail version and it's different to that on the editor disc the editor disc is dated january 1993 i can see in my magazines that amiga format got a playable demo in that same month january of 93 but it wouldn't be until may's edition that they reviewed the full game but either way this must be approaching the complete game by those dates Just like the Lemmings 1 editor, there's no music, perhaps to save their sanity, but there are sound effects. And like the Lemmings 1 editor, if you hit escape, you go straight into the editing mode. And things have evolved a little bit here. To create a level, we can select a tribe and that selects the tile set. You'll remember in Lemmings 2, you had different tribes with different skills to make the game more varied. If I'm being completely honest, I actually like the simplicity of the original more than the second game, but I get why they had to do this. If they didn't, it would have just been another Lemmings level expansion pack, so variety was key. And instead of just cycling through all of the tiles using Z and X, we can also see the whole tile set in this editor and then click on the tile we want. Z and X still work, but it's just nice to see them in this way. This is the Space Tribe, for example, and we can see there's lots of alien style blocks. There's a thing that looks a bit like it came out of the game Walker. And there's a cargo bay exoskeleton that looks just like the power loader straight out of the Alien movies. There's classic tiles, very much like something out of Lemmings 1 as the name implies. And there's also a cave tile set which we have to look at of course. And there's a Highland set which is a Scottish themed tile set and DMA being based in Dundee. Well they were well placed to design this and it includes such tiles as tartan bricks, Hadrian's Wall, a Loch Ness Monster, and a Tartan Flag. Oh, and of course a Scotty Dog is in there as well. Let's use the Highland set to create a level, shall we? You can place blocks in the foreground, in which case lemmings will bump into them and walk on them, or in the background so they walk past them on a layer below. And this seems to work differently to lemmings 1 because if I put something in the background with the editor in lemmings 1, the lemmings would still hit them and walk on them. It would just allow other objects to be painted over the top of them and the alpha layer would show the background tile behind it. So behind in lemmings 2 actually means it is behind the lemming and then walk straight past it. So a minor but key difference there. When I tested it out, I'd forgotten to place the trapdoor from which the lemmings fall into the level, but that's okay, they just seem to fall randomly out of the sky instead. And on this, my first attempt at a level, something has gone horribly wrong. It scrambled all of my tiles up. And even if I go back into the editor, they're now still scrambled. I don't know what's happened here. If I load up some more Highland levels from the disc and try editing one, such as this, where I've created a watery hole of death that let me fall straight into, I'm so sorry, my tiles didn't corrupt. So I guess that's a reflection that this was an internal tool. It's not hardened for public consumption. And I'm sure whatever is causing that was known by the level designers and they stuck within the parameters that they knew wouldn't cause this outcome. I've no doubt it would have taken a day probably even less if they wanted to harden this for public use. So I gave it another try with a more basic design, clearing the level. I picked the barrel for the lemmings to fall out of and the foam box that represents the exit. And it works. Here's a nice, simple lemmings 2 level. 
As well as the level design, you can choose how many of each skill the player has for the level. So here I'm giving myself 50 grappling hooks. It's really fun making levels, but I also had a lot of fun enjoying the levels that were on the discs here, like this medieval one. Just knowing how they were constructed, having played with the tools now, it gives you an appreciation for the skill involved in making them, both making them look nice and also in presenting a good challenge for the player. Level editing is hard. Whether it's for Lemmings or Doom or Sonic or whatever game it is, everyone thinks they can be a level designer, but when you really try it, that's when you realize what a skill it really is. Huge thanks then to Mike Daly for sending us that image. And of course, the radio control boats. <laughs> Thank you so much for sending them in, Mike. Now, um, it's been really interesting playing with this. I've really enjoyed it. Regardless of the level editor, it's wonderful to know that we've helped Mike to preserve that data that he's been trying to do for 20 years and it's safe and it's uh, forever preserved. And Mike is now considering sending the discs into a museum so that they can be put on display as well they should be because Lemmings was such an important game in the history of video games. Now, the next question that all of you will be furiously typing if you haven't already done so in the comments is, where can I get a copy? Can I download this? Can I play on this? Can I make my own levels? I'm sorry, I'm not in a position to share this with you. I had to sign an NDA myself to get a hold of it. I think it's the property of Sony, even if nobody at Sony knows that they uh, own this particular level editor, the Lemmings franchise, it, it would have gone from DMA to Psygnosis or to whoever else owned it further down the line, all the way to Sony. And um, now that's who it belongs to. So it's really down to them to give permission for it to be shared. So if you're at Sony, if you know anyone at Sony, give them a, give them a, a shoulder, an elbow. That's an elbow, that's a shoulder. Don't know my shoulder from my elbow. Give them a nudge, ask them to, um, to get in touch and maybe we can get down in writing that it can be released without any um, ramifications and nobody will get in trouble and then we can all enjoy it. Either way, it is now preserved. It's not rotting away on a floppy disk and hopefully that will happen one day. As always, thank you so much for taking the time to watch. I hope you enjoyed today's Tech Nibble and I'll see you next time. Take care, bye-bye.